Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our today's webinar. My name is Stefan Wissing, and I am one of the managing directors of Simple Camp Logistics and Service, the SLS. Thank you for taking time to join us today. The SLS is responsible for the worldwide after-sales service within the SimpleCamp Group. Next to our spare part service, MES and industrial IT, maintenance support and 24-7 remote service, we offer comprehensive retrofit solutions. When we bring old equipment up to the state of the art with these modernization solutions, the first questions are always, what does our customer need? And what improvements does our customer expect from the retrofit? Higher productivity, increased plant availability, and better product quality, for example. Right from the start, our retrofit solutions are consistently geared to individual customer benefits. A successful rebuild also involves finding the optimum way to achieve the defined goals, regardless of the size of the project. The basis for this is a well-designed concept that our specialist develops through constant dialogue with our customers. This also requires knowing the conditions on site and exploiting all the possibilities of digitization. All these factors are the key to an intelligent retrofit project that, in addition to maximum planning reliability, finally delivers the desired results. Now I'm very happy to turn the presentation over to our experts Linus Jöbring and Bert Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Wissing. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Linus Jöbring, and I'm the head of sales for Rebuilds and Modernization Department of SimpleCamp Logistic and Service. We are pleased to welcome you to our today's webinar. Today's topic is how thought of planning works and ensure profitability on a new level. Before we start our session, I would like to introduce our senior expert, Bert Kier, who will share his expertise with us. Thanks, Linus. As Linus mentioned it, my name is Bert Kier and I have been working at SimpleCamp for over 30 years. I have worked as a technologist, commissioning engineer and project manager and I am currently working as a sales engineer at SLS. During my time with SimpleCamp, I was involved in execution of new lines as well as retrofit projects. Today, Linus and I would like to show you how to benefit from our experience to create a win-win situation for involved parties. You may ask yourself, why consider retrofit projects in the first place? Or should I instead invest in a new line? Well, the answer can be both time-consuming and difficult to make. A new plant means a substantial financial commitment, a timeline of several years, and numerous other hurdles to handle, such as permissions, market volatility, and arranging the human resources. Furthermore, the existing plant has the advantage of running production, existing infrastructure, and experienced personnel on site, all which has been established over the course of many years. Although the financial aspect of a rebuild is appealing, several obstacles have to be overcome. I believe we are all familiar with maintaining the overview of the installed machines and buildings, continuously updating documentation and drawings, defining and analyzing the assisted bottlenecks of the plant. In order to overcome these obstacles, SimpleCamp has developed a four-step approach that is applicable to all manner of retrofit projects. We believe you might want to find out how this works. Like many things in life, it takes a team to achieve success. Let's have a look. The first step is analysis. This is where the documentation of the actual plant situation and generation of the 3D model is performed. In the second step, data, the alteration of the documentation, the modification of the new 3D model, the time schedule and the creation of the profitability calculation regarding the retrofit are carried out. In the third step, implementation. We are now in the execution phase of the project, which includes construction and dry runs without material. The fourth and final step, commissioning. Here, the result of the joint work from the first three steps are implemented. Now you have an idea how the four steps are defined and structured. Let us have a look how it is done in reality. Close cooperation between you and us is essential for a project to be successful. Right from the start, you and our expert will form a team and together we will define the objectives and the necessary product steps. We start with the question, 
What situation are you facing that requires a modernization or a rebuild? Possible answers could be our systems are technically outdated and therefore no longer economical. Or the raw material situation has changed, for example, the prices for wood and glue. Or the requirements for the production have changed, such as technical programs, operation availability, production knowledge of the personal, environmental requirements. Or the market situation is changing, prices, assortments, buyer groups, standards and demand. Regardless of which reason is your product driver, we analyze the situation for the retrofit based on your and our experience and define the goals of the product together. Simbicam, with 135 years of history, in combination with our engineering partner, Plan, which is part of Simbicam Group, have many years of experience and reference from hundreds of complete plans, design, planned, and now in operation. Simbicam Logistics and Service accompanies your plan through the life cycle, providing excellent service for spare parts, 24 7 remote service, and state of the art digitalization products. Most certainly, your plan is one of them. Well, Linus, that means we have a lot of information and the original documentation of the plans at our hands. Why not to use these original documents as the basis for the project, as they represent the initial situation before first production? In the meantime, there have certainly been changes that have not been documented. However, in most cases you either have the information on hand or at least know how to collect it. We guide and bring the two sources together to update the leading documents to the current situation. A few of the leading documents are flow sheet, layout, equipment list, and mass and energy balance. These documents are mandatory and only useful in the context of the current plan situation. Therefore, SimpleCamp is using state-of-the-art technology to scan the plan in its actual state and put it into a 3D model. This is done using laser measuring techniques and drones to scan either parts or the entire plant. The scans contain billions of single points being merged by our specialists into buildings, machines, steelworks and piping. The newly defined state of the plant summarized into only one master 3D model is used to verify every single necessary document, drawing and planning tool through the four steps. The documents prepared in the analysis step, together with the generated freedom model, are displaying the initial situation for our product to start with. The goal is to modify and validate all relevant product documents so we can adjust the 3D model with respect to the product objectives. What kind of documents have to be updated, Bert? Of course, that depends on the retrofit complexity, and I would first like to mention the flow sheet, a document showing the material flow corresponding linked machinery and equipment with clear numbers based on an identification numbering system. Furthermore, we have the opportunity to color code the symbols to illustrate information regarding scope of supplies and battery limits. Now, in step two, the material flow and related machinery and equipment has to be integrated into the existing material flow. Let's suppose that we have to consider a dry chip cleaning system for the retrofit. In that case, the adapted flow sheet has to look as follows. What we see here is the illustrated dry chip cleaning system with screw conveyor, pneumatic transport system and cyclone. The conveyors upstream and downstream are already installed. This means that only one view is required to identify which changes need to be made during the retrofit project with regard to the production process. The next document I would like to mention is the layout. It shows the position of machinery, equipment, buildings, roads, etc. at the factory site in a 2D drawing format. Now we have to repeat the steps as done before with the flow sheet and the place for this situation, the dry ship cleaning system at the site ground. The result looks as follows. The existing equipment is shown in black and the integrated equipment of the dry ship cleaning system is shown in grey. As we can see, there is enough space to install the equipment into the material flow and therefore eliminating any surprises during construction. The next document to mention is the equipment list. It's a tabular listing of all relevant data regarding the main process machinery and equipment. It includes the identification number and the most important technological 
technical, mechanical and automation data. Furthermore, it defines the scope of supplies to the responsible parties. According to the numbering system already mentioned in the flow sheet, the new equipment with position number 2123 has to be linked in after the screw conveyor with position number 2122. As you can see, this has been done in step 2. The documents start with the description of the function, the technical data for mechanics, electrics, and which scope of supply belongs to which party. In this case, the blue S defines that the scope is belonging to Simplecom supply. On the other hand, the red C signifies that the customer has to supply the connection shoots, according to Simplecom's workshop drawings or detailed information. That covers this document. But let's keep in mind the total installed power of 159 kW because it will be listed later in another document. Here I would like to point out that the previous documents, flow sheet, layout and equipment lists are sufficient for inquiries with specialized companies. Additionally, overviews and views of sections generated from the 3D model designed in step 2 could support inquiries by illustrating the scope to be quoted more comprehensively. Each change in the process is linked to the material flow and this is the subject of the next document, the mass and energy balance. In general, this is a calculation of the raw materials required during the process for each board thickness, corresponding thermal energy and consumption figures and amounts of byproducts arising from the process to be available as biomass. The table shows a lot of figures and I won't go into details now, but I would like to summarize that for each port thickness, the consumption of raw materials as well as the energy consumption is different. Logically, there is a minimum and maximum range of the whole spectrum to be produced. Essential for a retrofit is to find an economical design compromise between the minimum and maximum values for the product itself, but also considering the future market development. Customers should know even after retrofit, what the new limits of the lines are, and what kind of compromise they have to make to keep the investment in a feasible range. To analyze the thermal energy situation for the primary board thickness, it could be helpful to prepare the Sandke diagram, which is a graphical illustration of the mass balance in regards of thermal energy consumption. In the event the retrofit has an impact on the capacity of the line, it will be essential to consult this document. Another document to be mentioned is the electric energy distribution diagram. Each equipment change will be, have an impact on the electric energy supply and possibly the subsequent distribution systems. This document will need to be updated with the additional power requirements associated with the new installation to verify if the current energy distribution is capable and stable enough to provide additional power. We have now named exemplary documents that are to be updated together according to our systematics for the retrofit project. Or do you know someone who still thinks a project can be carried out without step 1 and 2 and their associated documents? It will be an incalculable risk in terms of success and investment. Especially for the installation, the risk is high. The 3D model enables the individual assembly steps to be displayed and simulated. This enables a more precise calculation of the assembly, which will have a favorable effect on the price. In this context, it should be mentioned that there is nowadays freeware, which enables everyone to take a closer look. Zoom in, zoom out, rotate, measure, label, etc. And therefore, the scan with integrated 3D drawings is an excellent means of communication in every aspect. How do we use these documents and drawings to finalize the project? Good question! Based on the created documents and drawings supported by the 3D model, we are now in the position to request additional quotation from sub-suppliers. By this we now have a complete overview regarding the design, the timeline and the cost of the project. And now the most important question, as always, money! The necessary steps and related costs are already content of the feasibility study. Let's assume that the return on invest is not feasible. What happens here in the most cases is usually the project is off the table. The development of the individual product steps allows us to jump back into the different steps to look for potential savings. 
All the project is divided into several parts, which can be executed at different times. But most important, the work done can be used directly, be revised or divided. None of the work has been in vain. Are we now ready to place the orders? Yes, let us have a look at the advantages during the implementation created by our approach. Through the already performed engineering and planning, each and every step in the implementation can be monitored and performed in a safer and more efficient way, avoiding pitfalls which cause delays and loss of money. No surprises now. We are in the position to act instead of to react, because each of us is aware that each project keeps one or two surprises. So, let us have a look at a few examples, which you probably will recognize. Here are a few examples that show the advantages of a combination of a 3D model and a 3D drawing. Let us start with a collision of different structures. The steel structure, shown in red, required for a retrofit was drawn in the 3D scan, which is shown in grey. It turned out that the existing steel structure was designed differently than shown on the original drawing. If the scan had not taken place, one would notice at the least during the assembly of the new steel structure that there are several collision points that require a change, which causes delays and higher costs. A collision point that could not have been eliminated so easily would be that of the pipeline in grey with the corner tower in red. Before starting the assembly, the requirements were checked using a scan. It was discovered that the position of a steel column and the foundation footprint did not match. After closer inspection, it was found that the foundation drawing was correct, but there was an error during the civil work at site. Luckily, the error could be corrected in time. Another example of the advantage of a 3D model shows the daily progress of the installation. In this movie, the already assembled parts are marked green in the 3D model. The parts that are still missing for assembly are shown in grey. This is a good way to estimate the degree of assembly, its progress or the remaining time required. One of the most crucial parts of the project is the installation itself. The downtime is limited and every moment and installation has to be done at the right time. To ensure this, the installation is simulated in advance using the 3D scan in combination with the new parts. Using this technique, the necessary space and placement of the auxiliary equipment like cranes can be tested in advance. This picture shows an example of the combination of a 3D model and a 3D scan, which clearly shows how new design can be modeled inside a complex existing plant. Okay Bert, what does this mean for the last step, the commissioning? Performing steps 1, 2 and 3 has put us in a position where all machines, structures and sequences have been checked and simulated in advance. Using this approach, complex retrofit projects like adding new equipment at the woodyard, new metformers and the extension of the press section have been done in less than two months. Without the extensive planning and simulation, the risk would have been much higher. Now the shutdown time was minimized and the profitability of the customer maximized. To summarize, using our four-step approach, we have created the following advantages for you and your projects. Number one, the retrofit project is based on common analysis and objectives. Number two, the actual situation of the plant is defined using state-of-the-art 3D scan technology. Number three, the initial documents and drawings in combination with the 3D scan are used to update and plan the retrofit project. Number four, implementation problems like collision points, execution errors or installation simulations can be explored in advance and corrected, saving time and money. Number five, the project can be implemented as whole, in steps or at the later stage minimizing your risk and maximizing your profitability. Thank you for your attention. We assume that you have a lot of questions 
and now we are happy to answer them in the Q&A session. Thank you for your time. It's late. You already lost some money.